what was happening before was I'd have a shell in there and I'd rack it, rack it, rack it, rack it. It just wouldn't come out of the out of the magazine. It wouldn't drop in, and it was pretty uh, frustrating. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I took a look at it today, and uh, we sorted it out. So um, it's a good fix for you. So that's kind of a nice sharp edge there. We got a nice sharp edge on both of those. Those two faces interface together. The way this kind of works is with this. We'll kind of align that up kind of works like this so that as the slide comes back it's going to cam this back and push it back in here so that little cam is what's what's causing it to move back and get out of the way and let the shell drop so it's got to get over on the back side of the slide so that's the key to the deal 590a1 repair from practical tactical i hope this works for you so i've been working on my 590a1 it had a feed issue and I want to show you guys what I think the problem has been. It's right there where I shined it up. That edge got kind of bumped and got rounded over. And it gets, that's the, that little shiny face right there is the, kind of a cam face that makes contact with the slide, the rails on the slide. So if you look right there, you know, I'll try and get a better angle. Is that going to focus? So if you look right there, that's the corresponding face. So that when the slide comes back, you can see how that's flattened off. And because of it, it's just bumping one flat face into the other. And it's not camming the, uh, the shell stop back. Um, so we got to sharpen up. We've got to sharpen up that that corner right there. I can feel a burr on it, so I'm going to take that on the on a, with a file and just kind of resharpen that point. So I've already sharpened this side, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the slide right there. And with the two those two sharp again, it should work again just fine. So I figured it out by putting a 10 thou shim in between the shell riser when it was coming up and down in here and i put the shim on the side of it i'll show you again later but i put a shim next to it i jammed a shim in next to it when it was actuating and then i could see that the the shell interrupter moved all the way back so i knew there was a problem there where something wasn't quite cam quite camming over correctly and that's what it is. It's that sharp edge right there. So um, hopefully this helps you guys if you're having trouble where the, you're racking the, the slide and the shell won't come out of the, the magazine tube. So that was the root problem. And uh, I think this is the root solution. So take a look at yours if you're having that problem. I think uh, just sharpen up those phases, you'll be back to business, okay? Okay, so there it is. Now that I've taken, a, I used a diamond file. I have these uh, this little set of diamond files here. And uh, I just went in there and I just touched up this little, uh, that little thing. So I removed the, 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 I just brought it back far enough to remove the burr and the little flat spot on the leading edge. So now we have, that's nice and sharp and it's nice and sharp on. So there we go. So that's kind of a nice sharp edge there. We got a nice sharp edge on both of those. Those two faces interface together. The way this kind of works is with this, we'll kind of align that up, kind of works like this. So that as the slide comes back, it's going to cam this back and push it back in here. So that little cam is what's what's causing it to move back and get out of the way and let the shell drop. So if that's not, if that can't, uh, if they're bumping face to face, then it's it's just going to violate and it's just going to enter. It's just going to kind of what's happening is it actually traps it on the inside like this. And then there's no way it's going to let a shell out. So you need it to cam over so it gets back in behind and it's well clear and it'll let that shell come out and let the shell interrupter on the other side stop the next shell from coming back. So if this gets trapped on this side, then you, there's nothing you can really do to get that, um, that shell, uh, you know, that shell stop to, to move out of the way. Like I said, so it's got to get over on the back side of the slide. So that's the key to the deal. 590A1 repair from Practical Tactical. I hope this works for you. Uh, take a look, and uh, I'm going to put this together, and we'll give it a cycle feed.
um, test, and I got a feeling this is going to work perfectly. So I identified the problem by putting a 10,000 shim. I got a little uh, shim pack here, and I put a, a shim in here as I cycled it, and basically wanted to get rid of the space between the shell elevator and this um, the shell stop here, the shell interrupter, whatever you want to call it. And when I put this in here, by creating a making a, this uh, the the elevator a little bit wider, it helped push this back just a little bit more when I was opening it, which kind of brings me to think that the root cause or the root problem here is really that this should be a little bit wider. The elevator should be just a little bit wider in order to ensure that it just pushes that back just a little bit, gives it a little help to make sure those two leading edges don't collide because that's what really starts it. And once it starts uh, getting a flat, it just gets worse and it magnifies and gets worse and worse. But putting, making this just a little bit wider would, would help um, just give it that little bit of help, even not enough to make it uh, really interrupt the way it feeds, but just give it just a, a couple of thou help, just pushing it out to the side and making sure those two faces don't collide and then it'll work fine. So I think it'd be more durable if uh, if that elevator was just a little wider. I measured it. Mine measures about 0.963, and I'm almost tempted to put a little dab of weld on the side of it just to, to make it just a little bit wider to make sure that it does. I don't really want to bend it or something. I don't want to risk what effect that might have, but if I put a little bit of weld on the side of it, that might uh, just help, just in that leading edge, right at the top of the rad, or the right as the, as the rad meets the sidewall. And, um, and that would just kind of help give it a little nudge, just to push it back and make sure those two edges don't collide. But uh, but that's the the problem with that 590 one It's, uh, you know, you know, I know it's a popular shotgun, and uh, but this is a fairly popular uh, fail point, I guess, on this gun. And uh, uh, you know, it's a combination of a couple of problems. So I think if they, if you guys, in, as a, you know, if you want to do some uh, preventative maintenance and make that shell elevator just a little bit wider, I think that would uh, that would pay off. So um, give it a try. I'm gonna, I'll do a cycle test. I already did. I'll put the gun together and I'll do uh, do that in a second. Okay, so I have the shotgun loaded with 12 of these mini shells, these little short uh, 12 gauge shells. Uh, 5981 fit 12 of them. I was uh, curious how many would fit. I have never tried that before. So we'll do a cycle test on, uh, on these right now. Oh, safety's on. Whoa. All right. first one was a little bit of a struggle because probably something in the mechanism still had to reset but uh, that seemed to work we'll do it one more time this time 13 of them fit so last time was 12 must be something to just barely barely fit so this last one's pretty tight so hopefully we have some good luck and it actually comes out there it is two three four five six whoa they spin around in here they're too short so they're not 100 percent reliable In the bottom of the shell elevator, the reason there's a problem, I'll show you, is these shells are actually too short, and they're, they're short enough to kind of fall out here. If this little finger was a little bit longer, hopefully you can see that, if this finger was a little bit longer, it would actually, it would hold the shell a little bit better, but sometimes they rattle around and they, they turn in there, and uh, you end up with some issues. So you got to be kind of careful. Plus, I might be, maybe I'm not cycling it in the right angle, but uh, they're not 100% reliable because of that. So, if this was a little longer, I think that would be an improvement. I don't know if there's any reason why it needs to be that short. If you guys um, actually are aware of any different shell elevator for the M40 or the, the, the 590A1, I would love to hear about it. Something with a longer um, bit of metal right here, because I think that would make these uh, more reliable. So. That would be really cool if somebody can recommend something like that. I don't know of anything, but uh, you'll see. See, when it gets in there, it's kind of, it doesn't all, you can kind of drop out the bottom, kind of like that. 
you know, so they're not a hundred percent. It's not like having longer ones, but uh, but they they work most of the time, as you can see. But uh, if we had a longer thing there, I think that would work. So anyhow, practical tactical. That was the fix on the. Uh, what was happening before was I'd have a shell in there and I'd rack it, rack it, rack it, rack it. It just wouldn't come out of the out of the magazine. It wouldn't drop in, and it was pretty uh, frustrating. I couldn't figure out what was going on. And I took a look at it today, and uh, we sorted it out. So um, it's a good fix for you. Anyway, practical tactical. Thank you for watching.